Oh, I love this church. <laughs> uh, so praise God. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Those are the traditional words to the doxology that I grew up singing every Sunday in church. And I still like them better than all the other variations that are available in our hymnal. And the choir just did a medley of some of them. I think it was a medley and not a mashup. Um, <laughs> there may be other words. Beth is uh, schooling me. A lot of music stuff. A religious path can take many twists and turns. It is a journey that I think never ends, but continues for our whole lives, and perhaps even beyond death. Those that believe in reincarnation certainly believe that. And personally, I'm not sure what happens after we die. But I do believe that if our souls live on, that they will continue to change and grow, and that we will arrive at new and different understandings. Because isn't that the definition of living, changing, and growing? But even if our path to, towards spiritual understanding has no definite end, it usually has a beginning. Most of us can remember a time when we had some sense of the divine, of mystery. A time when we began looking for answers, for something that would give our lives meaning. Something that would help us make sense out of all the chaos, of all the pain and confusion that we saw around us. We may also have been struck by awe at something in the natural world. We may have gazed up in wonder at the stars or down at a newborn baby's face. All of us have a religious path, past, even those of us who did not grow up in any faith tradition. Just out of curiosity, how many of you here today did not regularly attend religious services before you entered your teens? I know, yeah, I see quite a few. In many parts of the country, in a Unitarian Universalist setting, it would be closer to a majority of the congregation that might raise their hands and answer that question today. But most of us here have experienced other faith traditions. We have memories of them. And some of those memories are good ones, but others might be haunting us in ways we might not even understand. Particularly for people who were hurt by a religion or by a religious community, Anything that reminds them of that can be incredibly painful. I've heard stories from people whose religious lead leaders mentioned them specifically in a prayer in a way that made them feel sinful and wrong. Our community prayers might make those people nervous as a result of their past. Others have been judged, shamed, and shunned by their religious community when they express disagreement or doubt. Reciting a congregational covenant, even one so benign as our covenant of right relations, might be upsetting to them. And some people, even though they may have rejected the concept of an angry God, might still feel some fear when the word God is used. How can we honor 
our diverse religious pasts, care for those among us who have been wounded, and move forward together as a community of love and acceptance. First, I think we need to acknowledge the pain. The hurt some of us knew in other communities is real, and it was wrong. Let me say that again. It was wrong. There has been abuse, physical and sexual, and perhaps the most deeply damaging of all, spiritual abuse. Too many times our innocent hopes, dreams, and yearnings have been shattered by the actions of humans, and yes, by demeaning and damaging theologies and creeds. So, if you are one of those people who has been hurt in any of those ways, Please know it was wrong and it was not your fault. Please know that you are loved just the way you are by God, certainly by God, and by those who really do work at, because it's not easy for those that work at loving their neighbors as themselves. Please know, too, that others here can relate to those feelings and fears. For myself, I avoided all churches for almost 30 years. And even after I found um, a Unitarian Universalist congregation, I still freaked out some if God or Jesus were mentioned in a service in a positive way. So I'll testify I am not in that place anymore, quite obviously. I use the word God just fine. But part of what I did was to consciously reclaim some of the good things from the religion I grew up in. And, you know, it really wasn't a terribly coercive one, as conservative religions go. It really wasn't that conservative. So it might have been easier for me than it has been or will be for some of you. I was raised in the first Christian church, which is now known as the Disciples of Christ after that merger. And interestingly enough, this building was originally built to house a congregation of that denomination. And I still get mail sometimes addressed <laughs> to the pastor of the First Christian Church of Ogden. Talk about haunted houses. <laughs> I wonder if he's still here. Stephen something. <laughs> and I was baptized in a font just like the one behind that curtain. This is not the Wizard of Oz, but there is a baptism <laughs> back there. And I said yes when I was asked if I took Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. <clears throat> but as mainline Christian churches go, there wasn't a lot you had to believe in in order to belong there. No creed but Christ was their motto. I did not have to worry about the virgin birth or literal interpretations of the Bible. And Sunday school was mainly Bible stories, singing songs like, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, and memorizing Bible passages and other things. We got prizes for doing so. I was the only one in my class to memorize all the books of the Bible in order, Old and New Testament. The prize, the prize was a small glow-in-the-dark cross and I was very proud of it and kept it by my bed at night. I left that church in my teenage years. And one turning point was when some missionaries from the Billy Graham crusade came 
and showed our youth group a film. And I don't remember the movie very well. I know it had cowboys in it. This was like the 60s, so yeah. Rawhide was on TV, so the missionary films had cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it's culture, culture. <laughs> but one of, one of the young cowhands uh, was very troubled. But, you know, another one was saved. So he convinced the troubled young man to accept Jesus. And he too was saved. Great story. After the film, one of the missionaries asked us to come forward if we too were willing to accept Jesus. No one moved. And I wanted to. I really did. I wanted to really be. But you know, I'd already been baptized. I'd already been saved. So what would it mean if I went forward again? Was the earlier act then a lie? Was I somehow so fundamentally flawed that I needed saving more than once? Like, it seriously creeped me out, that whole incident. And I began drifting away from that church. And somewhat later, although I was still in my teens, when I realized that I was a lesbian, I knew the church would not accept that part of me. And I felt actually somewhat relieved that I had left before they decided to run me out. <laughs> but as I have grown in my Unitarian Universalist faith, I really have reconciled that experience. And come to understand that, yeah, we need saving again, again, and again. And I also understand that I received some gifts in my childhood church home. Things that were much more important than that glow-in-the-dark cross. I heard of a loving God and a gentle Jesus. I learned about the quiet comfort of prayer. I also learned about service to the church as I helped my mother prepare the communion that we share each Sunday. Grape juice and unsalted crackers. Tiny little cups and paper doilies. It represented the holy. And once baptized, I too was allowed to participate. We all washed all the little cups afterward by hand. After we collected them. And you know, I don't know how many of you have noticed, but there's little... Those are cup holders for the communion cup in the pews. They are not candle holders, friends. Those are for the communion cups. But doing all that felt like important work. I think it was. It's also important work to reclaim the good things in your personal religious history. Yes, acknowledge the bad things. Something made you leave it. That's the truth. Those were real. And you can feel good about your decision to try something different. Just as you can feel good about sticking with your childhood faith, if that is what you have done. And we do have lifelong life Unitarian Universalists. Cherish your doubts, as it said in the responsive reading that Gabriel let us in this morning. Doubt will help us walk in the light of growing knowledge and understanding. But cherish your history as well, because if nothing else, it has brought you to where you are today. Two weeks ago, two members of this congregation Renee and Mary, shared with us what they learned from growing up Catholic. It was the first of what we hope to be a series 
where different members share what they learn by growing up in various faith traditions. I want to include some who grew up Unitarian Universalists and also some who grew up without any faith. There is only one rule. We do have rules. The one rule is during this talk, you can't say anything negative about your prior faith. That was the charge that we gave to Mary and to Renee, and I think we all learned something from their words. I suspect that they learned something as well. It's really easy to talk about the bad things, but if you've got mixed emotions to bring out the positive, it can actually be transformative. So if you think you might want to participate in one of this, to speak to us all about your childhood faith, please talk to me or to one of our worship associates. It is okay if you still have some unresolved issues, because speaking of the positive can be a way to begin healing of some of those old wounds. So I love the doxology again, although I have reinterpreted in a way that makes it even more meaningful to me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise the sun, the rain, and the snow. Praise the night and the day. Praise the mountains and the sea. Praise the desert and the plains. And praise all that is, has been, and ever will be. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise mother, daughter, friend, and foe. Praise all who live and breathe. In the words of one of the hymns we sung, sang this morning, Come, Spirit, come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be, be made whole. Let inward love guide every deed, by this we worship. Those words remind me of the yearning, the longing I felt as a young teen, standing in the back of a sanctuary, one not unlike this one, wondering if I dared go forward, wondering if I could possibly be worthy. My spirit was longing to be made whole. So my friends, during the offering time, as you come forward to light a candle or drop a stone in the water, or if you just sit quietly, I invite you all to reflect some on your own religious history. Acknowledge the bad if there has been hurt there, but also try to see what good you may have put aside in order to avoid pain. Things that could still have positive meaning for you. Things that could help make your spirit whole. Our closing hymn this morning will be about laying some of our burdens down. It's a song that makes me feel like dancing. I hope it does the same. 